What a wholesome wedding reception we had. Everyone's having fun and we just had to just make Luke feel bad. But we didn't make Luke feel bad. Luke made Luke feel bad because according to any news, Luke was the one that wanted to, you know, actually do the duel and just see who's like better, right? To see if you can protect Sophia and Princess Ariel obviously also was trying to seek out like, can this person be a, an ally, a strong person to network with in the future when I retake the Asura Kingdom? Besides that, there was a huge plot twist with like Edina Rize being the grandmother of Sophie. Is it a plot twist though? It was kind of hinted in like the earlier parts of the season where uh, Edina Rize saw Sophie's some kind of like emblem, some kind of accessory, and that's like, oh shit, it might be my granddaughter. And that's the point where she actually starts to back off of Rudy. So it was kind of hinted there. Very sad how Edina Rize had to cut herself off from her like kids because of the stigma that comes with being associated with Edina Rize, right? So. Pretty sad, but still got to reunite with granddaughter and everything is fine and things are looking too goddamn happy. Everything is too happy. Everything is too mushy-wushy. And this show is gonna take us by surprise. When Rudy is the happiest he's ever been. When Rudy is so perfect and happy and nothing can go wrong. 20.3! And I am just fucking waiting for that. Let's begin today's episode. Oh. Letter from Dad? Paul? Eris is gonna say congratulations! I'm glad your dick is working again. Don't worry. I'll be back to make you fold and then leave you and then leave you with another erectile dysfunction arc. And then Roxy shows up to fix that. Where the fuck is Eris? Eris is still <laughs> Uh, I thought Edina Rizzi probably told you, but yes, I fucked Edina Rizzi. I thought that's what he was going to say. East Port. Well, it looks very Asian here in the architecture. I don't know the far left two, but we know about, you know, her. We got Roxy. Well, I do know the dwarf guy. I do know remember the dwarf guy, but I don't remember this girl, this girl, and the girl in between Roxy and the dwarf. Ooh. Oh, uh, uh, monkey guy. Uh, uh, season one, uh, after we went to that Dordora village or something, remember the monkey dude? Uh, the, 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 the monkey dude, uh, was like Paul's kind of friend, right? Is, is this him? Is that Geese? No, it's Richard! No, 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 no! It's Richard? Richard's gonna take the kids back? And why is Roxy scared right now? The face? Because spared. Richard. This gotta be Richard, right? It's it's gotta be Richard, right? No, it, no it's not geese, it's gotta be Richard. Okay, okay, okay. Wait, 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 Norn's not like you, as in she's fucking dumb. Uh, no, that's not what he's saying, but I could you could kind of see it like that. What's wrong with Norn, man? What, what's your problem, Norn? What are you fucking upset about? This deadbeat motherfucker just dumped his kids on Rudy to take care of. No, it's not that, right? It's like, they're going to Begari. This is like, you know, the second most dangerous, harshest continent compared to the demon continent, right? Can't take the kids there. But one could see, in a first glance, that motherfucker deadbeat asshole is sending the kids over to us. <laughs> Norn was there when Rudy beat the shit out of Paul in season one. You right. So Norn must- Stop beating up daddy! Oh, yeah. Yeah, that's right! That did happen! Didn't we make amends, though? Did we not, like... What was the outcome of that? Did Norn still hate us afterwards? I forget. <laughs> My man, Ruizard! Oh, Sophie's got an apron on, cooking for us. Yes, my wife is wearing an apron and, you know, cooking. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Wait! Didn't Sophie nearly kill Paul? During... Uh, uh, like... What, when was it? There was a point where Sophie literally like tried to kill Paul because she was enraged because Rudy was gone or something. This is the Mana disaster or some sh I forget, but someone said Sophie goddamn near killed Paul and she's like, 
After Rudy got thrown out of the house. Oh, right, right. <laughs> yeah. Because we sent her to Eris, right? Yes. When we sent, not the mana disaster. It was like, all right, go to go. Because like, that was basically because of shit. I, I can't afford tuition for Sophie as well. But if you go, you know, teach Eris and do this tutoring shit, then I'll consider it. And then Sophie almost killed Paul. That's right. We have two little sisters. Will Norton like Sophie? He's so happy, bro. It's just too positive, too wholesome. Everything is getting too good. And I feel like every episode of this season, do you guys feel like it's too? Like we're stacking up a house of cards, right? Every episode, the house of cards gets bigger and bigger and everything is bubbly and happy and wholesome. But like something's going to topple it. When he is the happiest he's ever been, all that shit will get pulled from underneath and we're going to fucking feel it. <sighs> That's true. This is the biggest development he's ever had. <laughs> An ex needs supporting his folks. <laughs> and you guys say that Rudy hasn't had, you know, development. The people that hate Mushoku Tensei. Look at this. An ex need is supporting the family. Taking the kids in. Umai? Yeah, I can't believe it either. It's too fucking good right now. Lasts for more than 10 minutes in bed. Oh, the... Oh, the disturb magic. Oh, this is lewd. Teaching each other magic? Oh my god. Yeah, I was wondering about this. Orsted even made the same claim when we fought. It's like, huh, you can use or inc incantationless. Then why are you not healing your lung right now, right? I don't think incantationless healing works differently from other spells. But he should be able to do it then, incantationless healing. It'd just be too OP, he could just incantationless heal, right? He can't feel the healing? Like, I'm sure there is proper lore of why he can't do incantation healing, less healing, but a part of me thinks that that lore is bullshit. And this is in place to make Rudy not fucking broken. I'm sure there's an appropriate reason. I'm sure there's like a very good reason. But like, you're gonna give this kid incantationless healing on top of it? At, at a certain point, it'd be just too fucking busted. Alright, disturb magic. Here we go. Disarming pretty much the enemy. It's kind of cute. It's kind of cute. Kids. Kids, huh? They've been fucking. They've been fucking. And I doubt they've been using condoms. Pregnancy. Kids. And uh, I just keep thinking about the fucking turning points. Because like, what happens if she gets pregnant and the turning point has to do with the kids or some shit? Like, I don't have a good feeling about this at all, bro. This is fucking terrible. Like, it should be good news that we're going to get kids maybe in the nearby future. But, like, all I'm thinking is, ah, shit. The more we have good things happening like this, the more things we have to lose. <sighs> For some reason, elves can't conceive children therefore we are allowed to get a concubine and a certain red haired girl <laughs> she hasn't showed up in a while there's also roxy <laughs> so sophie will be the main wife but she can't have kids and now we have an excuse to have a harem of roxy <laughs> and eris to have kids <laughs> okay Ain't no way you're asking right now in chat. Wait, Sophie is part elf. My man! Look at the ear, my man! Come on! Oh my god! Ooh, so fucking ooh! Okay, Nanaoshi. Nanaoshi without mask is rare. Is it this the lead up to turning point three? Because Sylphie was saying, you won't just disappear on me one day, right? I feel like we should stop fucking around with the teleportation shit with Nanahoshi, but it's safe. In theory, anyways. More mana for bigger summons. Makes sense. <laughs> 
<laughs> no, no, she looked at a glance at Rudy once. I was like, he's too stupid for this. All right, I'll explain to you in layman's terms. Naruhodo. A random object. Maybe Nanahoshi will summon potato chips from a 7 Eleven in Japan. Come on. Big bag of potato chips. Extra large family size. Uh oh. Uh oh. Uh oh. Uh oh. Failure. Nanahoshi looks destroyed. Oh my god, she looks shocked. She looks so sad there. Oh no. Don't give up. Oh, she looks so disappointed. But is progress? Are we still making progress? Ooh. Ooh. Man, I want to go cheer her up. Get, get her some potato bags, bro. She a big girl? Oh, she is a fucking rager, bro! <laughs> this isn't even crap. It's just baby rage. <laughs> I don't know if this is funny or really fucked up and sad because she wants to go home and she's like, God damn, but it's so, so funny just seeing them reserved and composed. Nana, would she just scream? <laughs> Holy shit! <laughs> I think this is the first time we actually got to see the real side in Nanahoshi. Like, I know she wanted to go home. Okay, this is not funny anymore. Oh, I think she's done. Her, like, brain just, like, melted. Yeah, what happened to her? Her face? Ill? I thought this was just, like, an aesthetic thing. Like, if you looked at her face, right? It looked all fucked up. But that was after crying. Is, 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 is this some kind of like disease? It, it's just because she, she, it, it's just because she just took an L and she's crying, right? She, she's just mentally broken, right? Oh, Julie. That's a royal for you! Dude, that, that, that Zanova scene, I think, is highly, highly, you know, uh, what, what's, the, what's the word? I, I, people should acknowledge the scene more. It was, it was quick, but bro took Nanahoshi? Make way! Everyone fucking listens, just carries him out, carries her out. Yo, this is reminding me of Koenji picking up fucking, you know, Mi-chan. No, it's out of desperation. Yeah, she does Julie. What are we gonna do, Julie? Grandmaster. My bad, my bad, my bad, my bad. I, I thought that Julie was talking about, you know, uh, uh, Nanahoshi, but Grandmaster is technically Rudy because Zanoba is Julie's master, and if Rudy is Zanoba's master, that makes Rudy Julie's grandmaster. What do we do? Just like. Julie's so goddamn cute. Julie's so goddamn cute. I just wanted to pick you up. Okay, Zanoba treats Julie well. See, guys? Child slavery is not that bad. See, come on. <laughs> I can't believe I'm saying that. Okay, so she just got to hang out with us. Eat some potato chips. Maybe it's time to learn. Knife? Dagger? What is that? Why is Rudy so scared of it? Is that like carrying a pistol around during a zombie apocalypse? So that you can go out on your own terms? What is the significance of this weapon? The way that Rudy looked at it, and the way that Sophie's saying it might just be for work, I think this is heavily suggesting that this was her wave out if she can't make it back to Japan.
or it has to do more with when Rudy got stabbed back on Earth in episode one. Hmm. Okay. That, 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 that was such a long time ago. I couldn't make a connection like that. That, that, that. that makes sense. When did he... No! Which episode was it when he tried to do this? Holy shit, you're right! When his dick wasn't working! When his dick was... Oh my... And I was laughing at that episode and then shit turned so dark and I was like... Oh. No, no, yeah! And then Zolda has to come in and... You're right! Holy sh- and then that's the episode that's with the Sarah just fucking- Oh my- oh- oh my god- oh bad memories, bad memories, but Yes, it is- has to do with that knife, but also it kind of hints that maybe this knife is- Maybe, you know, Nanahoshi using it to also do the same thing that Rudy tried to do in season 2 episode 3 Is Zanaba, you were pretty cool is it really? I mean, Julie did say that Rudy looks bad, but so far, I see the circles underneath his eyes, but he looked pretty normal, but I guess he's taking it pretty bad. Well, yeah, because he just saw that knife, and that's why the color went away, right? Because to remind himself that he almost tried to kill himself back then. Oh, you don't want to... Uh, you don't want to talk about it. Thank God Zolda was there. Zanaba is actually so great. Holy shit! That was a fucking jump scare. <laughs> She's fucking going through it. I didn't realize how bad she fucking had it. Jesus Christ. Potato chips? She's not talking, huh? Potato chips is gonna save her at this point, bro. We just have to give her some space and time. Sometimes trying to push it is too much. Every hole? Going back to the experimentation. Now one point. It's actually impossible? Well, we don't know yet. But she's saying, like, the final piece of the teleportation experiment. It's physically impossible, according to her. But I'm sure Rudy can figure something out, right? <laughs> Wait, there's no way these amateurs are just gonna fucking, you know, pick up Nanahoshi's work and then figure it out. And this is the way we make Nanahoshi happy by figuring out how to plug that last impossible hole. No way. Imagine Julie is the one that figures this shit out. Like, wouldn't it be like cute and like ridiculous if like you would never assume Julie to know how to do this, but like Julie just like randomly does something and it's like, look, you draw a circle and it's like, holy shit, she figured it out. I don't expect any one of you to do this. Okay. <laughs> yeah, the two parts go like this, so maybe you do this thing and draw a line here. Yeah, yeah. The fuck is a compound design, bro? Oh, instead of one magic circle paper, we have two to cover that. Pretty much. The sex doll? Wait, 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 Cliff has got something cooking? The sex doll to be is the key to figuring out the teleportation? Mommy Riz, Grandmother Riz. Maybe. So the sex doll is the key. Ah. She's showing her face again. Uh, no, no, she is. <laughs> it's just, it's sad and funny at the same time. They're just like holding this face the entire time, but okay. What is it? Does it make sense? What do the shapes mean? Wait! 
Three dimension. Oh. oh wait! This is like the puzzles I play in, like you know, in like Genshin Impact and Honkai Star Rail, where it's like you you, you see how this is done. It's, right? They, they're, so you find a place and there's like different objects behind it. You're trying to find an accurate angle such that you align the stuff in the background and it forms a shape. And that's kind of the idea of these, you know, extra circles. Boom, boom, boom. Alright, she's back. Depression over. He's a fucking expert I mean, he's a genius, right? You know what? I believe him now. He just fucking jumped in on this random fucking complex teleportation shit that no one should know how to do. Bro just jumped in on it and just figured it out. Cliff actually, like, giga chat. What was that from Eddie Wait, 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 wait. That side there was pretty heavy. Is she getting jealous of Nana? Is she right here? Right? Eddie is getting a little bit jealous? They started to fight against each other. No, this is the way the circle's supposed to be! Now it's supposed to be a square! Oh, Erinareze and Cliff sleep together. Julian Zanova. Okay. Nanahoshi. Alright. Bro, this is looking like a fucking laundry line. Like, there's so much fucking circles just hanging on the line. Okay, we taped together a bunch of circles. There we go. Dude, imagine this doesn't work and it fucking, you know, short circuits again and Nanahoshi just goes into another fucking depression. No. Multiple circles. Teleportation. Summon. Extra large family value potato chips. Bakana. It's plastic water bottle. No way. It's a plastic water bottle. Because the cost of a plastic probably doesn't even exist here, right? This is actually insane. Also, Rudy just introduced one of the biggest forms of pollution to this world, bro. <laughs> Rudy just single-handedly des destroyed <laughs> this world. <laughs> introduced plastic waste, bro. <laughs> what is he gonna do next? Fucking introduce the cost of guns? <laughs> Success, though. Still did it. Imagine it was a plastic dildo instead. Wooden dildo from <laughs> Princess Ariel. But like, so we're, we're not trying to just summon though, right? But the purpose of this isn't to summon stuff. The, the purpose is for you to go to Earth. You need to get summoned there. So far we have point A, we're bringing stuff here. And I get it, it's like the foundational steps, right? When we figure out how to get stuff to come over here, then we should be able to figure out how to send stuff over there, right? But like, what if we end up summoning something we should never have, you know? Like, is this not dangerous? Like, don't you potentially summon like a fucking demon lord like this way? Like, 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 by, like by some crazy coincidence or ridiculous thing, like, I feel like this research and teleportation is so fucking dangerous. And I'm scared that she may summon some kind of being that should have never been summoned before. <laughs> she got so excited there. Alright, she owes her something. She owes her something. Your tree. <laughs> Bitch, you better fucking pay up for trying to flirt with my man Cliff all this time. Wait, what body got? Just shows up for the fight. He probably got he didn't even fucking help out, bro. He just shows up for the fucking and look, his cup is so big. Everyone revolves the gun pie to body got his cup. Alright, personal lineage here too. Alright, everybody's here. I wonder why Body Gotti does this. He drinks while facing away while everyone's facing this direction. It has to be intentional. Something about demon culture. Congratulations! Oh, we saw this in the trailer, right? Nanahoshi being very happy and celebrating. Yeah. Woo! Yay! <laughs> Alright, pretty happy ending. <laughs> Wait, a person in Lydia making fun of Sophie that passed out from not being able to drink well? Is that what's going on? 
they're, they're just like, wait a minute. This is boss's wife? Hold on, I'm better. And then you can see Julie. Sorry, Cliff's looking astonished that he's not going to hold their liquor there, huh? Okay. Post-credit scene. Rudy walking back with the drunk Sylvie. Our sisters, Aisha and Norn. <laughs> okay, Aisha and Norn, they're just bickering. Got it. They they're, they're, they do not get along. <laughs> Does he have hair? If Rujer is bald, I'm gonna yell bald. Did he grow hair? Is, can he show us green hair now? Hi. Bald! I love him though. That's my bald man! And that's the episode. Uh, today's episode, I thought it was going to be depressing because it's been too goddamn happy. But even with Nana Hoichi's like mental collapse, we were able to kind of like bring it back through the help of everybody. Most importantly, Cliff. I think that Cliff was actually cracked. I'm not giving Cliff enough credit, dude. Cliff is actually fucking insane, an insane asset to our team. And we're finally able to summon a plastic water bottle. Thank fucking God. But the plastic water bottle is not the point, right? It could have been any trivial object. It's just the fact that we can finally summon objects from Earth now. Now that we can summon stuff, can we send stuff over? And that's something I don't really want to test. And how would you even test that, right? Well, I guess you could have people like having a, like we send stuff to Ru in a Rudy's place, but now now we should place in the water bottle and let's see if it gets casted over to Rudy's place. I don't know, but how would you test, you know, Traversing different worlds. That's some insane shit that I don't even know will ever will happen. Some of the other important thing is that Paul is being a deadbeat motherfucker and sending the kids over. No, Paul's not deadbeat. Paul has valid reasons, right? Paul is basically going to the most dangerous, you know, the second most dangerous continent. And the kids are coming over. So Richard is back with the kids. And this is great. I'm sure we're going to have to get some... Uh, there's some sibling drama between Norn and Rudy. Because Norn was there when Rudy beat the shit out of Paul in episode season one. Rightfully so. But we still have got to, you know, resolve that. And Richard, bro. Richard is fucking back let's go i hope he's been we you know traveling handing out his you know figurines and increasing the the reputation of the spirits but aside from ruger there's still one person that still hasn't come back yet and it is a certain red haired girl and we've been talking about on the stream how funny it would be how, and, and, and how funny it would be if Eris came back and Rudy just folded and Eris just like leaves him again after fucking him and he gets another erectile dysfunction art. And then that's when Roxy would come in to save us, right? But the fact that Sophie even said like, hey, I'm an elf and apparently elves are pretty bad at conceiving kids. So like, you can have a concubine. So this kind of opens up that pathway and we'll get there when we get there. But that's it from me. If you're still here, if you did enjoy this reaction, please like the video, check out the other playlist for more content, and until next time, take care.